Good morning, guys. I am still at the conference. If you watched last weekend's vlogs, we are just picking right up where we left off. It's the morning time. I'm gonna head down and get some coffee and head on over to the conference. I have on a black top this morning that comes from Amazon via allegedly the same factory that makes skims. So very comfortable. I have it with this little double necklace that I got in a FabFitFun box a few seasons ago, I believe. I'm wearing the Peri Para Ink Velvet. On my face, I have Woe Glow from e.l.f. And I also have the Winky Lux Mascara. We have the toucan to say goodbye to. All right, I'm here at the Neutrogena booth. There's Lubriderm. Ooh, I need to try this. Daily Moisture, Body and Face. I love the Advanced Therapy Lotion and the wash is really good too. And I need to try this Daily Moisture. Here we have Avino. Skin Moisture Relief. This is one of my favorites. Actually, wouldn't it be fun to have this in my apartment to sit on like a little ottoman the avino baby eczema therapy night balm it's really good highly recommend it actually oh look they showcase the oat oil oat flour and oat extract <laughs> honestly colloidal oatmeal baths underrated although they are messy but you know what you can do you can reconstitute this in like a little basin and soak um, gauze and do like a little compress if you have an itchy rash say on your arm or leg if you don't want to mess up your tub you can also get those um, single-use um, biocellulose face masks on Amazon they come in like a pack of like 200 and you can reconstitute those and do a little colloidal oatmeal face mask I also have a face and body gel cream for kids. I need to try that. I think we saw that together in Walmart one day. It does have fragrance, which is not ideal for atopic dermatitis. But... Hi everyone, my name is Josh. Side note, this eczema therapy rescue relief gel cream, you could actually use that on the face. I use it on the face. Um, it's really nice. It's kind of a less costly way to get the same kind of texture as my all time favorite the oat gel moisturizer. I really hope they never discontinue it. It is a pricier product, but it's really good. Last night, which for you guys was last weekend's Sunday night vlog, I tried out the uh, Vaseline Radiant Lotion, and it was extra glossy. The texture kind of reminds me of this Avino tone and texture with polyhydroxy acids. Love it. The cream and the lotion. The lotion's a bit more lightweight, but these are really good if you have sensitive but rough and dry bumpy skin because the polyhydroxy acids are nice and hydrating and they gently exfoliate but they don't tend to sting like alpha hydroxy acids can oh check this out i haven't seen this an spf 60 water resistant sunscreen in a pump 12 ounces okay i need to i need to find that in store new weightless formula have you guys tried this? I, this is my first time seeing it. I'm still sipping my coffee from earlier from the Margaritaville coffee shop. So I got an earlier start over here and did not go to the gym this morning, but let me tell you, you really can get your steps in at these conferences. Yesterday, outside of my workout, yesterday, which was last weekend's Sunday vlog for you guys, because it's a continuum. Yesterday, I got in outside of my workout 11,000 steps in what seemed like 45 minutes the <laughs> laser but when we actually think about and nobody thinks about um, the post duration which is how long the laser is on and off and why does it matter because that size not necessarily fibroblast I should say mm -hmm. senescent cells in general accumulate with aging and they're growth arrested but they're actually metabolically active Senescent fibroblasts in particular inhibit collagen synthesis, the pressure, and you want to think about the potential of contact dermatitis. 
and the devices and settings matter. So higher density up to a point is helpful. Depth is helpful for hydrophilic drugs. The coagulation zone, which happens with devices that heat, which is this little heated area around the hole. This acts like a sponge and provides more sustained release, especially for certain types of molecules. And lastly, you gotta think about vascular flow, because if your blood flow is really high, everything that you put in is just gonna be shipped out as soon as you put it in. And turns out, Dr. Haders also found that pulse dye laser can impact this. So if you do pulse dye laser prior to laser-assisted drug or topical delivery, then the topical is gonna stick in the skin more. It's an antioxidant. There have been studies that show if you stick your arm in an ozone chamber and then have vitamin C, you have less DNA damage than baseline. There's good evidence that improves photoaging, increased collagen, that's nothing new. So what happens when you combine it with fraction laser? Well, potentially you can decrease some downtime. There was decreased edema and erythema with the CE ferulic in a study by Dr. Weibel and in a study by Dr. Johnson and colleagues. They looked at a number of their patients and they found that they didn't have additional side effects with the use of CE ferulic. However, you can have additional side effects. So be careful with the vitamin C that you are using. There's case reports of granulomatous reactions after microneedling with vitamin C. Tough to know, is it something in that particular vitamin C that created the problem, or was it the microneedling? They get through the skin, they go through the cells, or they weave through the lipid matrix. Only about 0.1% of topicals actually go through the hair follicle, but a molecule this size is probably going through the hair follicle if it's getting in. And you know, I think the results are variable. And I think that speaks to how tough it might be to get in some of these huge molecules. But here is what happens when you combine it with energy-based devices. Granted, it's one study, but it is randomized and double-blind, and it did have 149 subjects, which is really impressive for a cosmetic study, which tends to max out at 10 or 20. And so there's level two evidence of this, and they did find a statistically significant difference in percentage of wrinkle reduction. So the average depth reduction with just the vitamin C group was about 30%. The average depth reduction of the growth factor in vitamin C group was 60%. Over here, you see that the growth factor group had some decrease in roughness, and also this is pre and post had some improvement in lines. We inject about a centimeter above the mid pupillary region and above the brow, and inject superior to the medial brow. Why? Well, it's not because the teaching was that you're going to help to reduce the risk of eyelid ptosis. But I think if you walk around this meeting and you see different people, there are a lot of unusual appearances out there. And you know, you see the dropped medial brow. That's like a telltale sign. I look on social media and I look around that dropped medial brow. Like, why is that? Why do they get peaking laterally and get this diabolical, diabolical look? So I want to explore that. So we did a trial a couple of years ago, and it was a trial looking at the product doesn't matter. It was with Daxi, but it was four different sites, uh, 60 patients in total, and there were four different injectors. And we were starting to analyze the data. It was moderate to severe glabellar lines. Below it, you're lifting up. Above it, you're pulling down. So theoretically, if you stay above that line, you're never going to drop the brows because you're only going to hit you're going to allow the movement upwards and not pull the forehead down, right? And so this is, and that line's about two thirds of the way from the brow to the hairline. But this is a really interesting paper. It was published in the same year in China, and it looked at this new refined pattern. It's super interesting. It's very instructive from a how to do it and little bits and pieces that you can take from it. So they kind of classified wrinkles into four patterns. Type one was mostly upper, type two mostly lower, type three all the way up and down, but mild, and type four was full upper and lower as well, but more moderate to severe, so more intense.
great conference day in the books. I didn't talk to you all too, too much um, after we last left off this morning when I checked in and scoped out some of the booths in the exhibit hall before it got too chaotic in there. I really enjoyed the talks that I went to today. I also had dinner tonight over in Little Italy with a group of friends of mine. I didn't film that because I, you know, it can be awkward and I don't want to be like, you know. I just came in with a Laroche Pose Cicaplast gel. Someone I was talking to today was asking me, they said, I saw in your video how you've been using Cicaplast gel around your eyes and my mind is blown by that. I'm like, yeah, it's really good. They were asking me, how do you think it compares to the Cicaplast Balm? They're totally different products. This I would not lean into if I had chafing, a lot of uh, irritation from a topical and I needed a true barrier cream. Um, you know, the Cicaplast Balm is like almost more of a sophisticated diaper rash cream with centella compounds that are, you know, potentially helpful for healing and recovery. It also has um, dimethicone, which makes it feel more lightweight on the face so people can comfortably wear it. Great product for windburn, as a side note. This, on the other hand, while it's got skin protective properties to it via the dimethicone, the glycerin and hyaluronic acid in this help to really hydrate and smooth out fine lines. It's a really interesting texture. It's not sticky or greasy, but looking at the footage of me with this all over my face, because at home I've mostly just been using it around my eyes, but this was the only moisturizer I brought. Looking at the footage of me with this on my face when I edit these vlogs, it's like, Wow, that is glossy. I almost look like a Blythe doll. You know, they have the real shiny plastic face. Tonight, I'm, I brought two pairs of pajamas, two sets of pajamas. Last weekend, if you watch the vlogs, I was wearing those cute lemon pajamas, but check these out. They have little ladybugs on them, also from Joy Spun. In contrast to the lemon ones, these are more, um, they're pants, but they don't have the elastic down by the ankle. So it was interesting, the talk that I attended today that, you know, some of the clips that I thought you guys would find useful that I captured, one of them was on, she was talking about the CE Ferulic. Now these are not industry talks, as a side note, so you won't hear them mention brand names. You're not allowed to say any kind of brand name in the talks here. Um, like for example, you can't say the brand name of pharmaceuticals, you have to say the true drug name. But the CE Ferulic is the formulation from SkinCeuticals that they use in these studies. And so she was sharing some studies. The talk was about how to enhance delivery. and. That one slide was like, yes, vitamin C can improve sun damage and improve healing, but formulation is key and concentration is key. Concentration and pH is key, right? That's why I'm always like, the formulation really makes a difference because vitamin C has stability issues and penetration issues. And But it's there's no doubt that putting it on the skin has benefits. It's just a matter of how can we maximize, optimize uptake. So the talk was showing some data about utilizing energy-based devices, which I've talked about in some of my other videos, to enhance penetration. And this is something I point out and I often get people saying that I'm fear-mongering, but she showed it there like you do have to be careful because there are reports of people developing these foreign body granulomas. And so that skincare product, the um, spicules, that's definitely a concern I have. I know the company claims that they shed in 72 hours, but it's like, how do you, there's really no way to prove that it's not a possibility. And it says that they dissolve, but how? It's not the same as silica powders and cosmetics that are small enough that they just sit on the skin surface. These are intended to pierce. I mean, they're, they're basically like little, sponge derived micro needles and the idea that they just dissolve makes no sense i mean you they, they're derived from an animal that exists in water lives its life in water and you're telling me oh they just dissolve in the skin not only that but spicules from sponges they're uncovered in fossils <laughs> like and you want to tell me that they don't that they don't have the potential to remain in the skin possibly that they're you know that they just dissolve i'm not buying it i'm not saying it's impossible 
but I have serious reservations. We do see cases of these foreign body granulomas and they can be quite disfiguring. So that was one thing I thought I would share with you guys that you might find interesting. And the other thing, I often get questions about growth factors and skincare products and I'm highly skeptical of growth factors like she pointed out. They're very large in size. The likelihood of them penetrating is pretty questionable, but utilizing energy-based devices to enhance penetration does show that potentially they have some effect. So what she was talking about there was like um, using, using uh, vitamin C with energy-based device to enhance vitamin C delivery or vitamin C plus growth factors. And when you added growth factors and you were using an energy-based device to get everything in, when you added growth factors, there was even more, even an even greater reduction in wrinkle depth and improvement in, I believe, skin texture, which is interesting, but it's like, is it truly because the growth factor is getting in there and improving collagen production, or is it just the effect of swelling and or moisture retention, hydration, um, that is leading to that decrease in wrinkle depth. And so is it just a temporary effect or is it true collagen induction? I went in the shower with my contacts in it. Harder to get contacts out after you've gotten out of the shower as opposed to before you get in the shower. Does anyone else feel that way? I, sh I mentioned in yesterday's vlog, which would be a last weekend's vlog, that I would update you on my thoughts on the Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Curl and Shine Shampoo. This is what I tried last night. Loved the way my hair was today. Soft, manageable, shiny. Used it again. So this little sample that I got at the at the um, expo had two shampoo and conditioners worth and I used it again tonight. It's got silk protein, which can help fill in like little gaps in the hair strand and help with smoothness, neem oil and emollient, and coconut oil, which is really good for the hair, helps reduce high growth fatigue. Panthenol is moisturizing. I really liked, liked these. Um, didn't leave a heavy residue or anything on my hair. Yeah, Shea Moisture has some good shampoos and conditioners. Anyway, y'all, that's a wrap up. I hope you all are having a fantastic weekend and enjoying these San Diego vlogs. Come back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, noon Eastern Standard Time for another vlog here in San Diego. Um, I'm gonna be here um, until Monday I leave, so I might even get vlog footage We'll see to take you guys into the next weekend um, just to keep things interesting. Maybe some airport airport footage, chit chat. We'll see. Yeah, I'm really having a great time learning a lot and I look forward to sharing more of it with you. So come back tomorrow. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.